there when we need them. But what do you do if you're seriously injured in a place so remote, there's no way to make that emergency call? I'm William Shatner. Tonight, true stories of people whose lives are in danger and the men, women, and children who try to save them on Rescue 911. We begin in Van Nuys, California, on the morning of October 10th, 1989. Ready, come here. Look at the mess you've made. It started out to be pretty much of a normal day. I started to get ready to leave the house and do some errands. Jameson usually comes with me, but this day he decided to stay with his mother. Sweetheart, I gotta go. Michael Rogers left his wife Peggy alone with their baby Michelle and three-year-old Jameson. The mother of Peggy, apparently she's had a sore throat and she's been spraying it with a, a cough spray and it was numbing her throat and then she had this cough drop in there. My mom had a lozenger in, in her mouth and she was playing with my sister. She bent down to, to tickle her with her mouth, with her mouth on her ribs because she loves that. When she went to stand up, I'm guessing between her throat being swollen and irritated and being numbed, she swallowed this thing and it lodged in her throat. Mom, are you okay? And then went to grab the spray. I handed it to her and she threw it back at me. I went in the bathroom and called 911. Dispatcher Bob Sanchez took the call. Lake City Fire, 911 emergency. Um, my, my mom's on the floor. I can't breathe. Who's on the floor? My mom. The child's voice came back and said, uh, my mother's on the floor. She's not breathing. Uh, when I took the call, I was more or less leaning to it being a, a prank call. Where is your mom now? She's on the floor. I can't breathe. Is she there with you? Yes, she's with me. Can she talk? Is she awake? She's watching a movie with me. He's watching a movie with you. Okay, can I talk to her? He's telling me stuff that the mother should be okay if she's getting up, watching TV with him. If she's watching TV with you, she ought to be breathing, isn't she? But she turned the TV off. Okay, if she just did that, let me talk to her. Then put her on the phone for me. Uh, if she can't breathe, she can't talk. It was his persistence that made me stay on and kept fishing for more answers. <laughs> You're choking? Is that you, ma'am? Was that your mom there? The turning point was when I heard the mother's voice. Firefighters and paramedics were immediately dispatched. A choking is when you have something in your airway and your airway is blocked. Within four to six minutes, if you're not breathing, you could die. I'm going to send somebody there. How old are you? How old are you? Three. Three? All right. I'm going to send the paramedics over there right now, okay? Can, they, can you be ready to open the door for them? Yes. All right. Paramedics are going to be there in a little bit. Okay, Charlie, we're going over there to uh, the condominium complex on the corner of Irwin and Hospital for choking. It's a 911 call. Okay. Okay, is there anybody else there with you? Your father, mother, sister, brother, anybody? Usually you can initiate some kind of emergency over the phone, like the Heimlich maneuver if they're choking on food or candy. Your three-year-old wouldn't be able, doesn't have the physical strength to do that. So there is a sense of helplessness. Can your mom still come to the phone again? Okay. I've gotten as far as I can in sending the units. Now it's up to them to just get there quickly. They got to the security condominium complex in less than three minutes, but there was no way in. Well, their directory was listed by names. It didn't show any condominium numbers, and that's what we had on our printout was a number. So now we don't know which one we should be buzzing to get in. I just pushed my hand on the whole directory and hoping a neighbor would, you know, answer it. Well, LA City Fire Department, we have an emergency. Open the door, please. We didn't know what direction to go in to find their unit. We started to go three different directions. About that time, Jameson came out of his unit, and he waved to me to, to come toward him. She was on the floor. She was curled up, and she was gagging and coughing with her face beat red. I think she would have passed out in another minute. And after passing out, I think that, that might have been the end of it right there. Uh, I think you're only talking about a couple of minutes after that before... 
uh, we would have had a completely different scenario. I didn't know what it was that was caught in her throat at the time. I figured that she can maybe grab it or she can feel it because her hand was in her throat. And so what I did is I grabbed a pen light and I shined it in her mouth and down her throat to see if I could see anything. I could not see anything and I stuck my hand in just a little bit further and at that time apparently I dislodged it from her throat and it went into her, her stomach. He said, I got it and pushed it down. Oh, the biggest breath of air was the biggest, brightest sunshine I've ever felt. It just felt great just to get, <gasps> breathe and I was fine as soon as I got air. It was in talking to her, she wanted to know how we got there, who, you know, who had notified, how did we know that she was choking. And it took a little bit of talking back and forth, and I realized then that Jameson, the three-year-old, had called 911. I, you know, I said to him, honey, did you call 911 for mommy? And he just he said, yeah. And it, it just dawned on me what he did. My son saved my life. I was just elated. And I gave him a big hug and a kiss and told him thank you. Though he was only three, Jameson knew how to call for help because his parents had trained him. We originally taught him when I was pregnant. And the only script I gave him to say on the telephone was, my mom's in labor, she's on the floor, please bring help. They would thought far enough ahead to have a phone accessible to Jameson to use. I mean, you teach a kid 911 while you're holding him up on the wall phone, and now they need to use the phone, they can't get to it. Kids are never too young. You know, sometimes we, we treat kids like they're only half people or something. Well, kids are smart, you know, and they learn by example. I think I'm a boy and a girl kid. I should call 911 because it's very important. The L.A. Fire Department officially recognized the importance of Jameson's contribution to saving his mother's life. That night, we each took time with him to tuck him in separately and give our little word of thanks to him. And uh, when I thanked him for giving me more time with Peggy, uh, he started to cry and said, well, you mean she would have died? And I said, yeah. And he started to cry, and that's when I think he really realized what he had done. Happy birthday to you. His birthday was two days after the incident, and I thought this wouldn't be happening now if he hadn't taken control. We've always had a mother-son bond, but now it's a little bit special. There's something a little bit more different. He will always have that special hero look to me. Next. Hunting in this area is uh, very popular.